Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, as a lot of you are, I just want to give you a short introduction and tell you what you've landed on. My name is Jessica. I'm a woman in long-term recovery. Um, I'm a certified peer recovery specialist. I'm also a certified revive trainer. On this channel, I make videos about substance use disorder, all different pathways of recovery, harm reduction, and anything and everything in between. So, first order of business. Thank you so much to all my new subscribers. We have 112 of you guys here now, and that just tickles me pink. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm so happy to see the channel growing. And if you have come here from one of my older videos, I've been paying attention to what you guys are watching the most and what I'm getting the most questions on. And I do have quite a few videos that hopefully I'm going to get film today so I can start editing them and getting them out to answer a lot of the questions that you guys have given me over the past month while I've been gone. That being said, I do want to let you know that the first video that I'm going to put up after this one is the second episode talking about Cami Payton. Uh, if you guys haven't watched that first video, I'll link it up here so you can watch it if you're interested. I'm kind of glad that life intervened the way that it has, uh, because if I were to put up the second episode of my Addiction Talks, Cami Payton, before now, I wouldn't have liked it because a lot of things have changed. I'm going to be working on that one after I get this one uploaded on the channel today. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but there are over a hundred of you guys here and I know that quite a few of you watch videos every time I put them up. Thank you so much for that. I have been gone for over a month because Keith and I have had a lot of stuff going on. I cannot remember if I've announced it on my channel yet. I know I've talked about it on my social media in January. Uh, Keith asked me to marry him and I said yes. We've been together for six years as of this month actually. And we are starting to plan our wedding. I mentioned my engagement because it's something that makes me very happy. Whenever two people get married, a lot of things change in their life. One of the things that's going to change in my life when I get married is I'm going to lose my insurance. And if you guys are new here, you may not know this, but I work a maintenance program. Uh, I do take Suboxone every day as part of my recovery pathway because I'm going to lose my insurance and... We are unsure how long it is going to take for me to get on Keith's insurance. And even if that's an option that we will be able to afford financially, I have to taper off of my maintenance medication. And I started that taper at the beginning of May or at the very end of April. And I'm having a hard time with this taper. With my taper, I am going through physical withdrawals because my body is dependent on that medicine. You know... Just like it's dependent on my antidepressants and on the medicine that I take for my migraines. Not only am I having to taper down off of my maintenance medicine, I'm also going to have to taper off my antidepressants and the medicine that I take for my chronic migraines. So it's been a lot going on. Uh, physically, yes, I have had some you know, withdrawal symptoms that have been uncomfortable. For the most part so far, I'm handling it pretty good. I have had a pretty rough day. Um, just one. So I'm thankful for that. But like I said, I'm going to make a whole other video talking to you guys about my taper because I want to share that with you guys and be open and honest with you about it. Uh, you guys know that the point of this channel is to help people. And I know I'm not the only person that is ever going to have to go through a taper. If you guys have any questions about it at all, please don't hesitate to drop me a comment. Let's see. Moving on from that, I had a cousin pass away. This cousin was very close in age to me. He was a great guy. He really was. It was a shock to hear that he had passed. Apparently, he's had been having a lot of problems, you know, with uh, an ulcer, some stomach problems. And he went to sleep one night. And when his wife went to wake him up the next morning, he was already gone. So we had that happen. I bring that up because when I went to the funeral, being that it was my mom's side of the family, all of my life, my stepdad has talked down about my mom's side of the family, even though he's married to her. And I cannot honestly think of any funerals that have happened on mom's side of the family that he has gone to 
maybe one or two. So I was not expecting him to be there. I was mentally and emotionally preparing myself to see my mom. Um, I don't have the greatest relationship with my mom. And uh, recently, you know, within the last year or so, it has gotten a lot worse. I feel like most people that watch my channel and follow me know and can understand how complex relationships can be. There was a lot of abuse in my childhood. And, you know, my mom and my stepdad will deny that until the day that they die. And that's fine. But I have a lot of unresolved feelings about it and a lot of, you know, internal conflict about it. And I struggle enough with that on my own. Uh, the reason that my mom and I's relationship has become even more strained than what, it, than what it was previously is because um, uh, things that have been said or done to my daughter that I think my mom should never have let happen. Uh, so anyway, um, we go to the funeral. Um, Keith went with me because I was going to go and pay my respects to my cousin. So I walk in and my stepdad is the first person that I see. Honestly, I've never had something throw me into almost a complete panic attack like that ever before in my life. That is the first time in my life that I've ever been in the same building with my mom at anything, not just a funeral, but ever in my life that I've ever been somewhere with my mom and walked out of the building and not told her that I was leaving, not told her that I loved her. We went up and said goodbye to my cousin and, uh, then I just looked at Keith and I said, I need you to find me a way out of here where I don't have to walk past him again. My older brother was there. I wasn't able to talk to him. Funerals are hard enough, especially when you lose someone unexpected. And I hate to even say that because even if you expect someone that you love to pass away from a long-term illness or, or something like that, they're never easy. And then when you add in unexpected people being there and things like that, it makes it so much harder. And I felt so guilty about walking out of that funeral home and not saying goodbye to my mom, not telling her that I love her. Because all of my life, I've always worried that someone that I love, you know, is going to walk away from me. We're going to leave. And if I don't tell them that I love them, you know, what if something happens? My mom has made fun of me. She's made fun of me about that. I felt very guilty, a lot of guilt for walking out of that funeral home and not going over and hugging her and telling her that I loved her and telling her goodbye. But I just, I couldn't do it with him standing there. My daughter doesn't live in the same state as us anymore. She's she's moved out of state. And a couple of days later, she let me know, you know, grandma's really having a hard time about your cousin passing away. And my daughter told me, you know, well, she just keeps thinking that it could have been you or Kenny. Kenny's my older brother. And because I would assume how close in age we were. So I, I stood on that for days and days and days. Finally, I reached out to my mom because, you know, I was like, well, let's try. We agreed to go to lunch together, and I went to lunch with her, and it was horrible. She said some horrible things to me. I'm sure if you would ask her, I said some horrible things to her. I, I walked out of that lunch. So That's something else I've never done. Uh, I've never walked away from my mom like that. And still, uh, to this day, uh, we haven't spoken, and I don't know if we will. And that is something that I struggle with. A lot. So, you know, been dealing with that without going into too much detail, getting all emotional about family stuff. When I left there, I was a wreck. And I reached out to my daughter and let her know, you know, hey, I tried, babe, but it's just, it's just not going to work. I told Keith, you know, this is going to take me a long time to get over. And I'm still struggling with it in a lot of ways. And I don't know how to get out of it. So I've really been having her time with all of that lately. And then, you know, a little bit of time goes by. When I started this channel, I told myself, don't ever get on there and act like you're happy when you're not. Be yourself. Be honest and true to the people that show up for your channel and that watch you because that's what you would want. I want to follow people that are authentic and aren't afraid to, you know, come on their social media and be like, look, I'm having a fucked up day. <laughs> And share it because 
uh, I think that one of the reasons our world and our society is so messed up today is because people are always striving to be perfect. And everybody's so scared to let the world know that they're not. I knew that while I was going through all that with my mom and just trying to find a place in that, that I felt like I could be stable enough that I couldn't come on and make videos and not feel like I was hiding something from you guys. So that's one of the reasons why I've been gone for as long as I have. Another reason is that uh, Keith started having a lot of pain in his side, uh, so we went to the doctor, and turns out that he needed to have surgery to have his gallbladder removed. Normal, everyday surgery for most people. Uh, Keith has a fear of anesthesia. He has a very valid, legitimate fear of that. So we were both concerned about that. We're both concerned about the fact that he had to have surgery. They wanted to do a biopsy of his liver. You know, stuff like that is stuff that happens when you get older, but it doesn't take away the scariness of it. So, you know, we've been worrying about that. His surgery was scheduled for May 6th. So we knew that that was the weekend of Mother's Day. Um, so the weekend before that, Keith was like, well, I'm going to go see my mom because I'm probably not going to feel like it, you know, two days after my surgery. So he is going to see his mom. It was like raining a little bit, more like misting. And I don't know about where you guys live, but where I live, when it starts raining, people act a fucking fool behind the wheel. They they forget how to drive. Thank God Keith was driving and not me. He's a much better driver than I am. He drives every day. That's what he does for a living is he's a truck driver. He has great reaction time, great response time great control over his vehicle. He saw the accident happening in front of him and he went off in the median and people behind him were not able to stop. So they came off of the interstate and sideswiped him. Um, he was not injured, but unfortunately totaled one of our vehicles. So now we're down a vehicle. Uh, we have surgery going on. I'm all messed up emotionally about all the stuff with my mom. We deal with all that stuff. Then we have to deal with the insurance. If you guys have ever been in an accident, you know. We are both just blessed that we have the ability to have a vehicle, much less have the availability to buy another vehicle now that we've lost another one. And we don't lose sight of that. Um, he has the accident. We're dealing with all that. So he has the accident the Sunday before he has to have his surgery. He had a lot of pain. After his surgery, we expected some pain, even though it's a laparoscopic surgery. Keith has a very high threshold for pain. He was literally screaming. He was in so much pain. It was terrifying. I I just, you know, I hate feeling helpless. When someone that I love is there in front of me and they're in pain, whether it's physical or emotional pain, and I can't do anything to help them. And I literally cannot do anything to help him. He's doing great, by the way. He is... uh almost fully recovered. We have The other thing that happened that will catch you guys up is that Mother's Day happened. This is the first Mother's Day that I have had where I didn't at least text my mom and tell her that I loved her and happy Mother's Day. When I woke up, I had a lot of physical symptoms of withdrawal. If you guys have ever been through withdrawal, if you've ever read anything about it, if you've ever watched any of my videos about it, you know that it's miserable. Most of the symptoms of withdrawal, I can handle. The two that I cannot handle that have typically been my breaking point in the past are the restless restless leg syndrome. I don't know why they just said restless leg syndrome because for me, it's all over my body. Anywhere that I have skin on my body is where I get that sensation. Uh, the second thing that I have the most trouble with when my body is going through withdrawals, the mental part of it, because I get so emotional. And, you know, I'm I'm years into my recovery now. So I, I remember vividly going through uh, withdrawals cold turkey. I try not to ever forget that um, because it keeps me grounded and it keeps me humble and lets me know that I don't ever want to go back down that path again. I immediately knew that morning as soon as my eyes opened that I was going to have a hard day. And I also know, you know, that when I have mornings like that and I wake up and I feel like that, I'm not just talking about when I'm having to taper off of a medicine. I'm talking about when I wake up and I know, okay, I'm going to have a hard day today. 
for whatever reason. I know that my brain is so strong and that if I just sit there and concentrate on it, it's it's going to make me feel worse. I try when I wake up in the morning, if if I feel that way, to do things that I know are going to make me laugh, do things that I know, <clears throat> you know, that I'm going to enjoy. Uh, with all of the Johnny Depp stuff going on in the news, it made me think of Pirates of the Caribbean. I was like, oh, those will make me laugh. I want to watch those today. Uh, so by the time Keith got up, I was like, you know, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to stay here in this chair. Um, I'm going to eat food that's bad for me and drink way too much coffee. <laughs> and I'm going to watch Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, one of the things that I'm so grateful for, knowing that I'm going to go through physical symptoms of withdrawal, this is the first time in my life that I've ever gone through anything like this, that I have uh, been open and honest with everybody that is in my life about what I'm going through. So when I start feeling bad, whether it's physically or mentally, I can tell my mom and dad. I can tell Keith, you know, I can call Danielle and tell her. And that makes such a huge difference. And I, I talk about this all the time in my videos, a support system and people in your life that you can be completely open and honest with about what you are going through is invaluable. Invaluable. It made such a difference to me on Mother's Day when Keith got up and I was like, babe, I don't feel good. And I felt so bad because he, here I am Mother's Day. I'm feeling like I need to be able to take care of him because he just had surgery Friday. So I felt guilty about that. And, but I was able to tell him and it made such a big difference. And I was able to talk to my dad about it and tell him, you know, this is what's going on. This is why I don't feel good. This is what the clinic is doing. And as soon as I was able to tell Keith that day, I don't feel good. And this is why I could feel, you know, this weight lifted off of my shoulders. No, it didn't diminish what I was going through physically. That was a hard day. And that was a hard, hard night. But, you know, I got through it. And just knowing that I had those options makes such a big difference to my recovery that I can be honest about it. Now I can just be like, my taper is bothering me. I'm, I dose down or I'm having a hard day mentally. Makes all the difference in the world. There have been other things, uh, you know, that have gone on. Life, just life stuff has been going on overall. We have got through the last couple of months together, and I hate that I wasn't able to be here for you guys and to be posting content for you guys, but I'm just so thankful that I got through that, that Keith got through that, that we got through it all together, and that now I'm in a better place mentally, emotionally, and that I can come back on here and start making videos for you guys because I miss doing it. There's so much stuff coming, you guys. So just bear with me. Thank you for not unsubscribing and <laughs> leaving me when I disappeared for a month. But I promise you guys that I got all kinds of stuff planned. If you could see my desk right now, the videos are going to start rolling back out again soon. I will put this one up. I'm going to work on the Cami video. Uh, like I said, that one will be linked. If you haven't watched the first episode of it and then I'm just going to start rolling into the other ones. So if there's anything that you guys are looking for from me, if you have any questions about my taper, how I'm handling that, that you want me to answer when I film my taper video, which is probably going to be coming up pretty soon, please leave them in the comments below you guys so I can make sure that I answer all your questions. That is it for today's video. I'm sorry that it stretched on so long. I meant for it to be a quick update. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. You never know what somebody is going through. If you need anything, none of that has changed. If you need to be trained on how to administer naloxone, or if you need naloxone, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.